When you ask anyone to name an N64 shooter, they'll no doubt say Goldeneye, or on occasions maybe Perfect Dark. It's easy to forget games which helped pave the way for Rare's sublime masterpiece. One of those games is Turok Dinosaur Hunter, developed by Iguana and published by Acclaim in the year 1997. No other N64 game has as many games in a series on the console, and this is where it all started. The console first person shooter arena was still dominated by games like Doom, Duke Nukem and Quake at this point, and the N64 was in need of a fresh early title to help showcase the system's hardware capabilities. The development of the game started in 1995, where ideas such as a side-scrolling platformer were thrown around, however it was felt that the character and setting suited a game more like Tomb Raider. Wanting to have more action in the game, it was decided to make the game a first-person shooter, and this gave them the opportunity to showcase the power of Nintendo's new console. During development, the team states that whilst Nintendo were helpful, they did in fact have to build all of their own tools to get the game running. They also used their new state-of-the-art motion capture facility in order to bring realism to the game, adding to this some real-time lighting and particle effects, and they knew they were onto one of the best-looking games around. Enter Turok Dinosaur Hunter an epic first-person shooter with perhaps the largest amount of free-roaming 3D ever seen in a console. Playing as Turok, the Native American warrior from the comic books of the same name, you must stop the evil campaigner from basically taking over the universe with a powerful weapon. The storyline may not be up there with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but it is the gameplay department where the game really stood out and helped turn around Acclaim's fortunes. At this point, they were suffering cash flow problems, and you could say that this game helped turn around their fortunes for a period, as it shifted over 1.5 million copies. Bear in mind, that was with the game having a mature rating, which limited its saleability to younger gamers, and also the high price tag of $80 on launch. I'm in no doubt that the game also helped sell the N64 as a console, as it was one of the first huge third-party games to arrive on the console, and that's even with the game being delayed by four months due to bug fixing and the difficulties Acclaim found from trying to get the game to fit on an 8 megabyte cartridge. Onto the game itself, and the first thing to hit you when playing will be the controls. The first time I played Turok, I found it near impossible to control. If you're used to the old school shooter style movements, then having a 3D world to explore can be quite a challenge to begin with. The game does take perseverance, but once you get to grips with the controls, you have a huge amount of movement to use in your exploration, and the analog stick finally gave you a sense of freedom in the game. Turok can run, jump, crawl and climb, as well as swim in some fantastic looking underwater sections. Graphically, the game was groundbreaking for its time. The first thing to address is the level of fog in which does drag the game down slightly. However, with the environments being generally jungle based, it helps add to the atmosphere. The environments themselves all fit the part and help bring to life the atmosphere of the game. Anyone who is used to the dark tunnels of Quake or the gloomy corridors of Doom will get a refreshing sense of space which makes the game feel much larger in scale. Adding to this a great selection of enemies from dinosaurs to humanoids with their own distinct attack patterns then you have a game that looks as good as it plays. One of my favourite personal aspects of the game is the weapon variety. Turok can use everything from primitive weapons such as knives and bow and arrows all the way to multiple rocket launchers. Getting to know how to best use your weapons is a blast, and even with multiple explosions and enemies on screen, it rarely suffers from slowdown. One of the best parts of Turok is the fantastic level design. There are times when you'll be face palming yourself after many deaths trying to traverse the difficult later platforming sections of the game, but aside from that, there's plenty to see here. The game weaves puzzles into the gameplay and follows a logic that makes them challenging, but not head scratching. There are also a very large number of secret areas which hold rewards for the inquisitive gamer. They range from shortcuts to weapon power-ups, and it's a game which generally rewards gamers who spend time in exploration rather than running through the levels as quickly as possible. Rounding off the Turok package is some of the best early N64 sound effects and music. The sound effects work perfectly and consist of the usual grunts and screams as well as some more high-tech sound effects for the weaponry. I didn't expect this mixture of effects and was sceptical about whether it would work in the game but I was thankfully impressed. The music consists of moody tribal beats which rarely become annoying and in fact add to the atmosphere of the game. You could say the only real letdown for me was the lack of multiplayer mode. It would have been awesome at the time to have been able to duke it out with friends in this first game, but alas that was saved for sequels. It's not a game killer, but it could have been an essential early N64 multiplayer game if it had this feature. 
Upon its release, Turok Dinosaur Hunter was pretty much universally praised. Critics loved its atmosphere and hailed it as the next first-person shooter evolution on consoles. Some other critics were less than impressed with its fogging, but even still they stated it was a solid and welcomed addition to the console. The game was the first third-party title to join Nintendo's Player's Choice range and this cemented it as one of the essential first buys for many early N64 adopters. But the all-important question is, what did Turok mean to you? After all, it's all about how us gamers remember games and so you've heard my thoughts, now it's over to you. Let me know your thoughts and comments and memories in the section down below and until next time.